This is BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now live from Studio C, here's Spencer Linton and Dave McCann. BYU Sports Nation is live once again, your day-to-day play-by-play back in Studio C, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Great to have you with us wherever and however you have chosen to connect in. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up alongside a man who is very, very excited for the official return of college football. I think it's today, right? It it is today uh, with Snow College, and they're taking on Trinity Valley Community College. Uh, Snow's in E from Utah, down the road. Uh, James Dye is the special teams coordinator for the Badgers. I can't think of a better fit. Here he is right here. Now he's special teams. He could also catch it out of the backfield. I love that uh, that uh, you punt, you die <laughs> mentality of James Die, and uh, so we wish him the best as he uh, settles into uh, a new season at Snow. And uh, man, a great receiver, but when he was returning punts, he was something else. So yeah, football is tonight, and then our first kind of games yeah. are Saturday, and then the mothership arrives. Uh, what, in nine days? An unbelievable <laughs> talent, James. And typically, when you look at Snow College, they've kind of had this pipeline uh, coming from BYU as players, and they want to get their coaching starts. And it's been a number of players. Uh, recently, Tanner Jacobson, uh, Jan Jorgensen is back yeah, with BYU, obviously. Great. A lot of these guys end up at Snow College, and now we have James Dye hanging out as the special teams coordinator. Again, I can't think of a better fit for him. You go down the road and you got Southern Utah where everyone came from, right? Kalani, Ed Lamb, and it feels like those two spots yeah. have been hot spots. And so, hey, the Badgers are in action tonight. Good job. Dave good McCann, luck. ladies and gentlemen, it's good to have you back on Welcome board. Welcome back from New York. Thank you. How was it? It was uh, an event, an eventful 48-hour trip, that's can for you, sure. Can you believe people choose to live there? No. No, it's a great place to visit. It's like a different planet. I said yeah. that to you right before we went on there. It's like a different planet. Yeah. When I was a student at BYU, I was a reporter for Good Morning America, and I'd go in, do a story, be on set, and go out. So my, my visits were like... 36 hours, and I thought that's the best way yeah. to experience New York. In, out. Hey, Dave, uh, I know that college football officially returns today in some capacity, but we're all counting down the same number of uh, hours and days, for that matter, to BYU and USF, which the count stands at what now? Countdown to the Bulls. Nine days away. Nine days. We're single digits. That, you brought some Broadway back from New York. Yes, I did. I thought, I thought you really belted that thing. <laughs> Remember, we've been doing this show, and sometimes this show's like uh, making bricks without straw uh-huh. uh, because it's the summer and there's nothing going on, and you're just like, someday we'll be nine days away. Today's so that day. Here we are. Nine we are days. Single digits. In fact, a week from yesterday, I get on a plane to Orlando because we're going to cover the game. Yeah. How, how wild is that? Be good. Uh, We have a wild show lineup. It is absolutely loaded. Of course, we're talking BYU football, specifically Jaron Hall. The accolades continue to roll in for BYU's heralded quarterback, which begs the question, do you like that for him? And how much pressure is associated with those accolades for Jaron Hall? How does he handle all of that? We'll discuss that in a moment. Uh, We will also speak with the man who is making waves in the name image likeness category and frankly giving out scholarships to BYU from Built Bar. Okay, this is a great story, Dave. We've talked about a a number of times how Built Bar has gotten involved. Who's the man behind it all? You're not going to want to miss that interview. And volleyball opens this weekend, a doubleheader on BYU TV. Jerem Jordan needed some time off, right? He's, he's got to rest his voice for sure. I don't know gonna, if he needed two days, but he, but he did need some time. <laughs> he's going to call a lot of volleyball for ninth-ranked BYU uh, women's volleyball as they open up their season. Whitney Bauer, superstar, will join us as the Cougars get closer to their initial tip or shot, if you will, of the volleyball season. But first, bring on today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. And we begin with the man of the hour, Jaron Hall. He's on the Johnny Unitas Golden Arm watch list. The list is made up of the top 76 quarterbacks this season. That's a lot of quarterbacks, but it's good to be on that list as opposed to not be. And on a quarterback side note, Notre Dame's announced sophomore Tyler Buckner is their starting man against Ohio State next Saturday. He threw for 298 yards last year with 35 attempts and ran for 336. Could be running for his life against the Buckeyes. We'll see Buckner in October. Yes, we will. 
Speaking of BYU women's volleyball and Whitney Bauer coming up, the West Coast Conference preseason poll was released. The ladies, not surprisingly, picked to finish first as a top 10 team in America. Bauer, Heather Knighting, Kate Grimmer, Aaron Livingston, all named to the all WCC preseason team. Another dominant group. They reload, Dave, at this point. They reload. Hey, Ronnie Jones Perry, the U.S. women's volleyball team, defeated Costa Rica 3 0 yesterday at the Pan Am Cup. She led all scores with 11 points. The United States facing the Dominican Republic later tonight at 9 o'clock Eastern Time. Hey, we spoke with Eric Mika in Studio C not too long ago about his adventures with USA Basketball and his pursuit of the NBA again. Well, he's still playing for the United States Basketball World Cup qualifying team. Mika and the U.S. will take on Uruguay tonight, 9 p.m. Eastern. World's a big place, and a lot of these former Cougar basketball players have found ways to have jobs shooting hoops. Absolutely. I wish them the best. Let's go, Eric. On that note, all rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. Dave, we just talked about Jaron Hall and the most recent preseason nod with these preseason honors and accolades coming in. And the list is getting long, okay? Uh, you jokingly this morning called it the Magnificent Seven. That's so a big let, list. let's lay out the Magnificent <laughs> Seven. He is on the preseason award watch list for the Maxwell Award, okay. the Manning Award, the College Football Players Association National Performer of the Year Award, the Davey O'Brien Award, Walter Camp Player of the Year Award, the Johnny Unitas Golden Arm Award, which we just mentioned, and he's uh, on the Reese's Senior Bowl Award watch list. That's Dave, a lot of watching. Uh, seriously, a lot of eyes on Jaron Hall. How much pressure is on Jaron Hall and his shoulders now going into this season with all of these preseason nods? Because this is different than what we saw with Zach Wilson a couple of years ago. You know, BYU put out a tweet yesterday of uh, Hall mic'd up during the scrimmage so you could kind of climb into his head as he leads the team around the field. And I watched that a couple of times. I'm like, I don't know if there's any pressure on him. He feels like he is right in his element, living the dream. Yeah. And with, with full command as the leader on the field, now around it, as, as you read those lists and as fans talk, and, and, and then we create this, well, there has to be all this pressure because of all this stuff. But it, he appears to be in a really good place where it's like, here's the thing, I want, I want all of that because I really want to be on one big list, which is the scout list coming up for the NFL draft. <laughs> oh, so he's, these, he's on it. If these watch lists keep everybody watching, the real list he wants, the watch list he wants, is the draft list, and um, I think you, Zach was Zach had no, he had no accolades coming in. Didn't even know he was going to be the starting quarterback uh, coming in. Yeah, how about that? He yeah. was battling with the likes of Jaron Hall and Baylor Romney and yeah. others for that starting position. COVID helped him a little bit because it it took a lot of quarterbacks and sat him out. As BYU kept playing, other schools didn't, and so he's on TV every week. And Magnified he was, he was lens and uh, and didn't play any P5s, um, but he played great. And, you know, $35 million later, it was like, that's a great, that was a great season for him. But he didn't have near the hype that all the greats at BYU had to deal with. You know, for Bosco, wins the national championship, he still had a senior season. Talk about hype. Mm. You won the national title and now you're coming in. Detmer wins the Heisman, then he plays his senior season. Talk about hype and ex expectation. McMahon goes 12-1 and one as a junior, then he's got his next season. Steve Young, the same thing. And, and... They all answered the bell. You can throw in Sarkeesian and John Beck. And then when it came to time to get a job, everyone knew who they were. Yeah, we, we've seen both sides of this. Uh, and you talk about John Beck and Steve Sarkeesian. Sarkeesian went 7-4 and four in 1995, uh, but they felt like they were on the cusp of something special. He finished really strong yes. against Fresno State. Yes. And also it was like, whoa. So th that one game kind of gave us a taste. We are like, okay, all right. Um, but Sark didn't have this type of preseason – these type of preseason accolades coming in. John Beck was kind of in a similar situation. Played well at times in 2005, but then 2006 kind of took that step forward. Yeah. But Jaron is like, to your point, Jaron is, of the, or Jaron is of the mentality that I don't feel like this type of stuff bothers him. I don't, I don't think he reads into it. I watched the same clip that you did yesterday a couple of times. He feels like he's in complete command. His team listens to him. They trust him. They respect him. They believe in him. He's just a different type of leader. 
uh, and he's a different type of player than Zach Wilson. So I kind of feel like we're comparing apples and oranges, but also for Jaron's benefit, he has a ton of talent returning around him, specifically on the offensive line. And so while, yes, there is pressure to perform as the quarterback, it's the quarterback position. By nature, it carries pressure but he's got so much talent around him, I think that they can help alleviate that and they can carry some of that on their shoulders too. You want all that for the BYU quarterback, for the 10 quarterbacks that are going to follow him. They want this kind of spotlight. That's why they That's why they come. That's why the others came. And I'm reminded of a great scene from Pirates of the Caribbean as we were talking this morning in our morning meeting. And you got Norrington dressing down Captain Sparrow as, <laughs> as what he says. You're probably the worst pirate I have ever heard of. And Jack Sparrow looks at him and says, but you have heard of me. <laughs> it is important to be heard, to be noticed in this game where you want something bigger down the road. And, and I, I, I think Hall would, would look in the mirror and go, man, that is a little bit of expectation. But I wouldn't want it any other way for a guy who wants to play in the NFL. He's putting himself in a great position to transition to that next level. Now he has to go do it. Now he's got to go perform. He's got to take care of business. But to his credit, I mean, 20 touchdown passes, five interceptions, a 4-1 to one touchdown to interception ratio. BYU wins 10 games. They go 6-1 and one against seven power fives. Yeah, Jaron Hall's noticed. And he's going to continue to be noticed. I feel like... If he has a great season, Dave, right now he's probably projected late second round, early third round pick. If he's got a, he has a great season, and you can define great how you want to. But if he, even if he puts up similar numbers to last year, if he's got 20 touchdown passes and five interceptions again against a tough schedule, his stock will rise. Yeah. He'll, be a, he'll be a second round pick. Like if he has like gaudy numbers and they're just off the charts good, then that's how he sneaks into the first round. But, I mean, if he just kind of maintains this year against that schedule with all his talent around him, He's going to be a second-round pick. That's why there is so much pressure on this team to go to Tampa and win that first game. Because Baylor's 10th in the country. That, that's a signature moment. But you got to, you got to, you know, to have a signature moment, you got to be, be on the paper. You've got you to get through South Florida. And we all expect that they will. But that's going to be a tough game. And, uh, you know, all of the summer is like when you look at, oh, he's got Notre Dame. If he looks good into Notre Dame, he could get an NFL job. Well, Arkansas after that, that's pretty good. Oregon on the road, okay, all right. And then, of course, Baylor, and even Stanford on Thanksgiving whenever, weekend when everyone's watching football. But it starts with South Florida. Yes. And, and that, that's kind of where when you start thinking about, what's the biggest game of the season? Well, let's go with Coach Talk. The next game of the season. It, re it where, really Which is. is the first game of the season. So many reasons this game looms large in South Florida in Tampa for a guy like Jaron Hall, and we've chronicled all of them. That's why we have a two-hour pregame show. <laughs> we need all just of it. Just to build we the We need every second moment. of that, for, <laughs> for sure. I'm, I'm always intrigued by uh, the conversation of pressure. Like, how, how do you quantify the units of pressure? We don't know. Like, we don't know how much pressure these guys are feeling, but we can say in confidence, and you and I agree on this, that Jaron's not feeling all of the pressure solely on him. Right. Like, he, he knows what he has around him, and that's huge. And the weird thing about pressure is it's relative. Um, you know how to do this show. But if we grab someone off the street and sit them down and turn the camera on, they're under immense pressure, and they feel it because they have no idea what they're doing. I got called up on stage to sing with Marie Osmond at a show the other night. That was immense pressure. That's pressure. That is out of my wheelhouse. Calling a football game? Well, hey, we've done that a million years. Yeah. We've done it. And, and we know how to prepare for it. So that's why I wonder if, is, is he really feeling pressure? Or is he going, sweet, playing the game I love? Everyone knows I'm playing, and I got a really good team, as opposed to you or me playing quarterback at South Florida going, <laughs> I don't even know what to do with the football. Um, Tell me which shoulder to turn over and how to hand it off to Chris Brooks. That's where we'd be. Rock stars playing in front of a stadium. Is there pressure on them, or are they in their wheelhouse? It, it feels like they're in their wheelhouse. Take a rock star and put them in an interview. I interviewed Barry Manilow one time. A little different. It was totally different. He was fidgety and nervous and couldn't control that moment. But on the stage, he knew what note was coming and what song was coming, and he was a, and he was a superstar. And I'm thinking, maybe pressure's relative to, sure. are you even prepared to do it? Yeah. And if you are, maybe it's not pressure. Maybe it's opportunity and fun. Yeah. They're, to your point, BYU football, with all the experience they have, they feel like they're collectively in their element. Jaron feels like he's in his element. 
There are always butterflies maybe those oh, yeah. first few you gotta have those. plays. Like, that's natural, but then when you get into your element and you've got that experience, that's when you start to see special things happen. Yeah. Okay, our question of the day. How much pressure is on Jaron Hall going into the 2022 BYU football season? Let's go to Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. At M4GBit on Twitter says... I'm sure that Jaron's putting a lot of pressure on himself. One, to stay healthy. Great point. Two, to make big plays when they count. Three, to put the team on his back when he needs to. A diamond cannot be formed without pressure. But to a degree, Dave, we've already seen that diamond kind of be formed yeah. for Jaron. Like, he he has gone through a lot of pressure. So a lot, a lot of that has already happened. And you right? know what you do with a diamond that's already been formed? You just polish it. And then you jack up the price. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you do. Is NFL with stock. With a diamond that's already been formed, yeah. <laughs> Jimmy Edwards on Facebook says, a lot of pressure because he's the focal point of the offense with Tyler in the NFL now. Again, Jer yes, he's the focal point, but there are so many weapons around him. Yeah. Uh, the offensive line shared a lot of that weight as well. Who was no the pun intended. Who was the focal point last year? Was it the quarterback or was it Algier? It became or Tyler Algier. It, Nakua? it, be, it became and Tyler Algier. How much Algier? pressure did Algier take off of, of Hall? And how much pressure can Chris Brooks take off of Hall? Yeah. So is it all on Hall? Or is it just he's got to get the ball from Connor Pay and yeah. get it to somebody? Just Let stay, them do it. Stay healthy. Yeah, yeah. To, to, to the tweet that we just read. St stay healthy. And that's a little bit out of his control. Some of it's in his control, but that that is the key. You talked to Tyler after the game the other night. How is he doing? He's fantastic. And if you missed that interview, you should watch it on our YouTube channel. Uh, you can go back and watch that whole episode. Um, speaking of a guy that's healthy, he's healthy. He's feeling great. Interesting um, that he had two years left to run the football here at BYU. Jumps to the NFL, but does he feel like he belongs? Yeah. Does he feel like the new kid in the block? His team feels like he belongs. Yeah. His coach, Arthur Smith, that is for sure. All right, Dave, let's keep this thing rolling. What's coming up? Which BYU position group would you like to go rafting with? <laughs> now that's something to think about because you want to keep the raft afloat. Plus, he's making dreams come true for walk-ons and Cougar Tails healthy. There he is. We saved his name and his image for here. It's Nick Greer, ladies and gentlemen. He joins us next. CEO Bilt Bar on BYU Sports Nation. My grandfather started this company in 1947. He couldn't have envisioned what we would ultimately become. We realized that our value to our customers is that we will be there day after day, year after year, doing whatever we need to to find solutions to the challenges that they face. We are committed to be honestly better in all that we do, in every opportunity that we have to serve our customers. Sitake and Greg Rubel. When I was younger, I was a better dancer. Don't show any more dancing on here. Okay, good. <laughs> I think we've developed some really good habits the last couple weeks and, and looking to step it up again. A lot of great things can happen when they care. Not bad. That's good stuff. Hey. Yay. Yeah, thank you for ending on that one. That was a good <laughs> one. <laughs> BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. That is Puka Nakua. It is Puka time. Join Blaine Fowler, David Nixon, and me 
Next Tuesday for After Further Review, we'll look at Puka Nakua, Jaron Hall, Gunnar Romney, Chris Brooks, Peyton Wilgar, Dallin Holker. AFR Tuesday, 7 Eastern on the BYU TV app. We'll preview the South Florida Bulls as well. When you see a graphic like that that says Puka time, that screams that the season is here. Yes, it is. In fact, it's nine days away as we chronicled uh, so boisterously, at least on my account. Yeah. You're all broadway out after your Marie Osmond now, Yeah, experience. but you were, you were fresh in from New York. <laughs> you were still, I thought I was at Cats. Alongside Dave McCann, I'm Spencer Linton. We are in Studio C. Yes, this is your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play, -play, and it is our privilege now to welcome in the CEO of Built Bar, a man who is heavily involved with BYU athletics and Good making idea. dreams come true and creating scholarship opportunities. Incredible. His name is Nick Greer. Nick, welcome to BYU hey, Sports thanks, Nation. Guys. Appreciate it. Appreciate being here. It's fun. Okay. I do want to talk a little bit more Murray, but we'll do that later. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> like, like, like about 50 minutes. That absolutely needs to happen. <laughs> now, I do want to rewind uh, to something that happened last Saturday when, you know, the goat of mascots just added to his legacy, Cosmo skydives into Lavelle Edwards Stadium, but in collaboration with Built Bar. Yes. Okay, so this is happening. It's super cool. The landing is just, oh, well well done, Cosmo, <laughs> right? Okay. If you would have heard the music, though, right there, it was like almost like he couldn't have timed it any better. Yeah. And the music just goes boom. There's a song the from uh, Into the Spider-Verse yes, playing, yes, right? Yes, it was so good. Oh, it was so, so, so good. great. Okay, was there ever, I mean, any inclination in your mind that maybe I should skydive with Cosmo, too? Did you ever consider that? 100,000%. Does that, does that prove it? Because I say 100,000%. <laughs> I, want, I wanted to, and we were planning on it, and then they figured out since it's in the stadium and we're going in the stadium, I couldn't. Really? I, have, I think 50 or 100 jumps. What? In order to do it into the stadium itself. You, okay. For myself. So, okay. Because so, of liability. For have myself. you skydived sky before then? Never, You've never skydived. Never, but I was ready. <laughs> Stupid and ready, for sure. <laughs> you didn't want to see a slam into the press box <laughs> or that. Or get no, caught but you know what? It, was good, it was good to see Cosmo become, become the spotlight of that. It was awesome. Yeah, made for great video. And, and this whole thing is made for, for some great moments for, for you and, and for Bill. Let's go back to last year. Um, you make headlines everywhere. Sports Center and you name it, because somebody decided that they were going to do somebody, something for walk-ons. Mm. So when did that idea hatch that it's like, I want to do something, let me go to the folks who are totally off the radar and help them, and that puts you completely on the radar? No, absolutely no credit here. I mean, really, credit goes to Kalani. His love for those boys, his love for the team, his love for the underdog, mm. and when he's like, what can we do to help them out? immediately it was obvious, okay, this is what we got to do. It actually started with just six, and then we thought, well, let's do ten. And then we realized, wow. Because, you know, it's an expensive Yeah, yeah it, it kind of adds there. up a little yeah. bit. I don't know if you knew that. I learned <laughs> it in math class one time. But, uh, and then we realized, no, we got to do all of them. We got to do all of them. And, but it definitely wasn't intended, all right, let's do all of them and, like, make, you know, national headlines. Right. It just happened naturally. Did you envision it getting the type of national no. attention that it did? No, not at all. It was wild. It was cool. It was crazy. But listen, that's like 15 minutes of fame or whatever you want to call it. We got work to do now, and the team's got work to do, and that's what excites us is like how can we help, you know, build a stronger team, and, but yet at the same time highlight these boys, these young men who give everything they got yeah. to make those scholarship players even that much better. Tell us uh, an experience with, say, your favorite experience with one of these guys. Uh, who, who's had their life altered because of your participation with, with BYU football. What, what have you heard? What? You know, I, I haven't said this much, but there was an experience when I first started my business, a, a business 20 years ago, and there was an individual, two individuals, who gave me my first loan at the bank, mm. and it was the Gunthers. And it was Talmadge's dad and his uncle. No way. And so when they called up Talmadge uh, on that second guy, when, uh, you know, coach calls him up and he says, you know, it's Talmadge. I thought, you got to be kidding me. Fellow Lone Peaker, this is so good. I love this kid. And it gave me goosebumps. And I thought, okay, this is being led. This is being guided. That's pretty cool. His family gave you your first loan. The, yeah, the Gunther family and Bank of American Fork at the time to, to be able to launch a company of mine and, and gave you, me trust and in me. You gave Gun through a boost. Yeah, it was a little bit smaller of a boost, you know, that they gave me. So he didn't have I, to pay I, back. I own more. He doesn't I, have to pay really, back. No interest. No <laughs> yeah, that's interest. right. No interest. <laughs> well, that was really cool to watch because he was super emotional. Yeah. I mean, like watching all these guys come up, and it's hard not, like, first time I saw the video, it was hard for me not to get emotional oh. for them because I know 
to a degree what they go through. And Kalani talks about and tries to document like what their life is really like as a walk-on player. And I mean, just to be clear, like there was a stipend given to every player on the BYU team, but Correct. it was specifically focused on getting those walk-on players, essentially scholarships. So now that it's, you know, a year has passed, um, what, what are you trying to do this time around? Because you're back again. Yeah. Like, like why, why come back again? Are you, what are you trying to do differently? What, how have things progressed in that regard? Yeah, no, great question. I mean, really, this is just the start of what we want to do with student athletes in general. Uh, we want to go do something across the nation in general. It's not just BYU themselves, but of course, we're a little biased towards BYU. Love these guys. Love those players right there. They're so good. They're so good. We see them out on the field as fans and we revere them, but you know what? These guys are real. They're legit, and they love each other, and that's what's so cool to see that, that interaction in the locker room, and if we can build off of that to go do something bigger and bolder than just like, okay, just sports itself, that's when it gets pretty fun and cool. And it's not about just giving out free money. These guys are asked to do things in return. What kind of things through NIL are these players asked to do uh, no matter who the uh, contributor is yeah you know right now I mean one of the things we ask of course talking about our cougar tail which is a little epic we kind of like it it's one of my favorites if not my favorite now but most importantly what we're trying to do is we want to go feed and fuel kids and um, we want these these players these athletes um, these student athletes to go out there and say all right you know what we're gonna rally in our communities and we're gonna help feed and fuel these kids mm -hmm. and actually give back to our local communities in different ways and how can we build men out of boys? That's what we would like to do. So yeah, so there's a, there's a hey, we, we expect you to take this, we expect you to do this. Yeah. And, uh, and that's good, because then it gives some response. We all just like money to fall out of the sky. <laughs> but like when, Cosmo, when right? it's handed yeah, to on. us, and oh, by the way, here's the plan for you to make a difference. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, you've got, you've got somebody engaged. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the initiative involved specifically with the Cougar Tail Built Puff yeah. Bar is, is really cool. And I mean, I know you've, you've touched on that, but uh, I, I do need to ask. I'd be remiss if I didn't. How does it taste? Is it, do, do you like it? You, you know what? Maybe, maybe after, after the show, you have to taste it. Um, you tell me what you experience. Okay. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. And guess what? You don't feel guilty <laughs> after it, which serious. I love. Yeah, it's pretty good. Can we try it's pretty good. It but, uh, pretty that, that's just me. That's just me. What do you see and envision for your company and their involvement with BYU, not just a football team, but athletics overall? Yeah, I mean, right now in fueling stations, we are fueling athletes. We love that. We want to do it more. Um, our company is a company in innovation. We are innovating a ton of a ton of new products, specifically with bars and different types of bars. This is just like we're scratching the scratch of the scratch on the surface, which is fun and exciting. But we want to build off this, and, and player development is, is really key for us and important for us. Most of these kids, they're not going to go and play professionally, and we know that. We love them while they're here, but how can we help build something special in this foundation? Because they're going to be leaders when they go back out. When they, yeah. when they leave here, they're going to be leaders in their community. That's what's pretty cool. There are a lot of folks who, um, who haven't spent a lot of time studying what NIL is and what it does. They just see in the headlines, uh, this kid's getting a million dollars for here or nine million dollars for this, and they think, wait a sec, all this money coming in to pay the players, is the, yeah. the notion, is going to ruin the game. Um, as an NIL person, how do you respond to that? And, and, and obviously we've heard some of it that is we're, we're improving lives. They just happen to be playing the game. Yeah. But there is a little bit of a stigma because there aren't any rules. Right. And there are places that take advantage of no rules. Right. BYU's yeah. not one of them. But yeah. what do you say to that? Yeah, you know, I wish it was called N -we -l. I mean, I know it sounds a bit weird, but I truly, I wish it was more about we and the team yeah. and how we can build off the team. That's what we're trying to do. Our dialogue, um, our narrative behind this is, is really, it's, a, it's about the team. And Coach, you remember this as a little kid. Coach always said, there's no I in team. Right. But what are we teaching right now? There's I in team right now. And that's what NIL is creating, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, and so can we create a different narrative, a different dialogue, and talk more about the we and the team? And building upon that team, yeah, it's going to be hard. Sure. Because it's going towards that eye, and it is that eye and those eight, nine million dollar deals. Mm -hmm. But is it really doing anything? You ask the players. In fact, ask them, do you move the needle for these companies and do you feel like you're doing much? Most of these players, and they're going to say, I kind of feel empty. Yeah. I don't feel like it's like 
But what they do feel of fulfillment is when they're working together as a team. Yeah. That's when they get excited. The NWEL initiative is a worthwhile venture. I, I like that. Nick <laughs> Greer. like we could get that changed. Yeah. Should Nick go, Greer, CEO of. Should we go by that domain? Of, domain? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you buy that domain. That'd be good. CEO of Built Bar. Nick Greer is with us on BYU Sports Nation. Uh, you're obviously a fan and have experienced some great things working closely with these specific athletes. But what was the moment your BYU fandom went next level when you were little? Like, when, when did this really begin for you? Yeah. Washington, BYU game. Um, I was a kid, elementary school. We flew into Washington. We went golfing. And uh, um, Chambers Bay, I remember this. That wasn't Chambers Bay. We did Chambers Bay a little bit later. But there was a, it was the Redwood. I remember big Redwoods. And we went to that game, and we got smoked. Um, and it was tough and it was embarrassing. Like I remember 55 to 7. Exactly. Yeah. And I remember being in the car in traffic and we had our BYU gear on and people were just yelling at us, screaming at us. And I remember the guy we were with my, with my dad and he said, roll up the window. And I'm like, I'm not rolling down the, uh, rolling up the window. I'm keeping it down. I'm showing them my Cougar fan. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll never forget that moment going through, the, through traffic. And that was a moment that I'm like, you know what? I believe. Wow. So that, that, that okay. So you're, you you doubled down on your fandom after a, an embarrassing blowout yeah. loss. That's a refiner's fire right <laughs> that, there. That is real commitment for sure. Okay, um, you've been at practice. You've been watching the team. Yeah. Um, and, and you've been in close conversations with, with Kalani. Uh, I'm not going to ask you to break down like film or, or, or plays and, and reveal secrets, but I am going to ask you about the feeling and the emotion that you get from this team and why you feel like they are capable of something special this season because I know you feel that way. Yeah, solid. Absolutely solid. But you know what? I love what Coach is doing. He's focusing on those small details, and he's like, he's not complacent. And I love that. It's like complacency will kill. Mm -hmm. And what he's doing, he's like, we're not complacent. we got to get better in these details. And you know what? It's, uh, it's things that are going to be taught greatly to these boys for the rest of their life, these principles. And that's what excites me. But there's something a little different. There's a swagger. There's this confidence, a great confidence that you see, and you're like, I love it. I love it. And Jaron Hall, I mean, talk about a freaking rock star. <laughs> I love that guy. I lo he's a superstar, but he's good in here, inside his heart, yeah. which makes him great. And makes him very beloved for BYU yeah. fans, for sure. Beloved right up until. <laughs> you know, let's, We're brutal, if right? It stays, if, it's, <laughs> if he does well in South Florida, he stays beloved. He's, you're fighting for... Being beloved. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's not yeah, easy. That's tough. Not easy. Nick, thank you. Nick, it's great to have you on oh, BYU Sports you so Nation. Much, we appreciate everything you're doing appreciate for BYU you. Athletics, and uh, we look forward to you know, more of the collaboration and what it's going to do to change lives. Let's do it. Thank All you right. so much. You got it. Coming up, how does BYU volleyball top last year? And pretty good last year. Am I ready to take on T.O., Terrell Owens, who I feel like is like 50 years old at this point, in a 40 yard dash? Wait until you hear his time. He's, he's ridiculous. This is BYU Sports Nation. If you're looking to build your brand awareness and increase market share as BYU moves into the Big 12, this is the place, BYU, BYU Athletics. Athletics. We can provide the tools you need to make sure your company is seen and heard. BYU Athletics is where you can align your products and services with loyal fans that cheer for our Cougars. And they can also help your business win. Learn more about what a partnership with BYU Athletics and your company will look like. After all, this is the place. Email sponsorship at byu.edu today. They prefer to be bringing the heat, getting set for success, demonstrating their drive. But when their blood and sweat turns to tears or anything else, we lay the groundwork for BYU's athletes to hit the ground running again, and you as well. Intermountain Healthcare. Official medical provider for BYU Athletics. Wrapping up in a minky couture luxurious blanket. Getting cozy with family and friends. A gift for everyone. Minky Couture, official luxury blanket of BYU Athletics. The Super Girls of Summer are back. What kind of friend are you looking for before school starts again? Kind. Creative. Honest. Fun. 
so many good friends, you're sure to find one who speaks just to you. So make the connection before summer's over. Watch the Supergirls of Summer only on BYU TV or on the free app. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. This is BYU Sports Nation to interact with the show and get great content throughout the day. Follow us on our social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. He is budding Broadway star Dave McCann. I am merely Spencer Linton. Time to. <laughs> you just got back from Broadway. That makes you the Broadway star. Okay. How about Nick? It was nice to have him Nick, here. Nick was you fantastic. Get to know him a little bit. Yeah, great dude, doing yeah. wonderful things, not just for BOA, but looking to take that initiative to uh, several Everywhere. programs and impact lives for the better. Really yeah. cool stuff. Let's whip it. Cougar Whip Round presented by Maris, your e commerce logistics shipping partner. For the first time since 1997, BYU begins the fall season with three teams nationally ranked, soccer, women's volleyball, and football. How many sports will finish the season ranked? Whew, if we're just talking just fall sports, man, and these are the, we're referencing the big three of soccer, volleyball, and football. But let's throw in cross country men's and women's too, Dave. Like, I believe that all three of these teams plus cross-country men's and women's will finish the fall sports season ranked. So I'm going to say five wow. BYU teams will finish the fall sports calendar ranked in their respective top 25 polls. For the second straight season, Yes. Right? Yeah, I think it's pretty it, good. Give me a reason why I should doubt that any of these teams would do so. I know women's soccer is number nine, women's volleyball is number nine, and football is number 25, but I mean... Again, give me give me a sh give me a reason. Who's like, got the most? Who's got the most to replace from last year? Talk probably women's soccer. So that that that'll be a challenge because they've got a challenging schedule, but they're still good. But they're high enough that even if they lose a few matches and then get going, as teams do in the latter part of the season, they're gonna be right there and, and probably compete for another West Coast Conference Championship. All three of those plus cross country men's and women's are gonna finish right. Bring on the Big 12. This group's ready. All right, BYU football went on the annual Provo River raft trip yesterday. Dave, if you were to join them, and this is, you think carefully, which position group would you join in a raft? <laughs> Look, that water's freezing cold. I've been down that <laughs> thing on a tube. And he got everyone saying, I'm the captain now. I don't know who the captain is of this thing, but what I'm not doing is getting in a raft with that awesome offensive line. Because I don't know, <laughs> I don't know if you can keep the water out. Okay. What about you? For whatever reason, I feel like the special teams guys, because they're so unique and crafty, they would like have their way with the paddles. Like <laughs> they, they understand like angles and are meticulous in their preparation because they have to be in the limited action they see on the field. So I, I, I kind of felt like I'd probably go with the kickers and the special teams guys. And Ryan Rico's a beast too. He can be the anchor in the back of the ref. You know, right? and those are those He's are great athletes. guys. They're like, hey, let's avoid that rock. Let's let's do that. <laughs> it's all about field position for them. Where do I want to be? Where's the best chance for success? Get me in the middle of the field. Yeah. And let me kick it down. Now, the if you want the craziest group, I think in terms of just like super brash and confident then you go with the defensive backs I think like, they're <laughs> oh, like yeah. oh that's the biggest rock let's go there let's go. I think we can let's take attack the biggest rock you know one thing people don't realize is that water comes out of the bottom of Deer Creek it is as cold so as cold, cold is. It is so cold and uh, when you're in the raft the last thing you want to do is be in the water <laughs> it looked like they had a great time great way to wrap up camp and now they can get focused. turn their attention to USF you know what it won't be in um, in South Florida it won't be nice and dry and all that stuff and it won't be that cold you know once you're in the water but it will be hot humid and muggy and the opposite of what we got going on here all right all right here's a big one i hate that you're going to ask this at 48 years old terrell owens ran a 4.3840 4.3840 he's 48 years old here he goes right here in the dash of the titans and watching this made us wonder uh how old would T.O. have to be for you, Spencer, to beat him in the 40s? Because <laughs> we've also got exclusive footage of that boy. He gets ripped. Now, here's the, here's the other side of the coin. I'm wearing maroon shorts. Yes, I'm my high school shorts. Go. But what? First Big baggy shorts. 20, 30, 40. He's in. Yeah. The. Uh... What people don't see is he went right over to urgent care. 
after, <laughs> after this. So how old does T.O. got to be for you to take him? Well, listen, I, I, I'm guessing I probably run somewhere around like a 5'3 right now. Um, <laughs> so uh, how old does he have to be to run a 5'3? I'm going to give T.O. another decade, okay? Like probably 60 years old and then we could have a have a race but i would need to be my same age that's the problem dave like i'm getting older just like he is yeah that's true he's getting older differently so i would need to stay the same age and he would need to like crawl up to 60 and that's how i would maybe maybe compete with him here's the thing with to he's probably thinking looking at his time going i think there's a team that would probably <laughs> could probably get me back in the league i gotta do that again but I got to do it with like professional training and like the right clothing and, and not running on a field that had just been aerated. <laughs> the, the, the first bad choice you made was the maroon shorts and then it just went from there. It's so bad. Coming up, so a rise bad. and shout out to a Chicago Cubby. Uh, and Whitney Bauer is back, the star women's volleyball player for ninth ranked BYU in studio to discuss a brand new season. What are the goals for a team that lost like all of two matches last year? This is BYU Sports Nation. Accidents don't just happen nine to five. They happen when you least expect them. The team at Siegfried and Jensen is here for you 24 seven. Nights, weekends, every day, every hour. Really here for you. No matter when you call us, you'll speak to a real person and have access to the same expertise and personal attention as always and get the legal help you need when you need it. Nights, weekends, every day, every hour, 24 seven. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. Introducing the Truck for Adventure. The all-new 2022 Nissan Frontier doesn't compromise on power or comfort. This mid-sized truck was redesigned to incorporate the latest technology and designs for safety, comfort, and convenience. Plus, with up to 6,700 pounds of towing capacity and best-in-class horsepower, it's rugged enough for adventure and still safe enough to transport all your favorite people. Where's your new Frontier? You'll find it at Tim Dowling Nissan Southtown in South Jordan. There are things happening in Seaburg. They care more about people spending money than they do about people getting sick. If they're causing toxic pollution, it is everyone's fight. We can't just let them get away with it. If anyone can figure this out, it's my brother. Friends don't abandon each other. Fine, be heroes. I know what it's like to love someone so much you'd do anything for them. Whatever happens, I'm glad we're facing it together. Me too. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. 10th ranked women's volleyball team opens the season tomorrow at high noon mountain time. That's 2 Eastern against Ryder live on the BYU TV app. And tomorrow night, Duke is at the Smithfield House. You see that one at 7, 9 Eastern, 7 Mountain Time on the BYU TV Mother's Shift. Yeah, this yeah. Year. If there's a home match for BYU women's volleyball, uh, there's about a 95% chance it's going to be on BYU TV. Yeah, I think ESPN came in and grabbed one. Yeah. But uh, the rest of the home matches are on BYU TV. That's why Jerem's out today. He's drinking lemon juice, getting ready. <laughs> He's to resting his voice. He's got a doubleheader tomorrow. But uh, it, it's going to be exciting. <laughs> and it's games back that matter. It's kind of brought life to campus. For sure. Yeah. And we welcome you back to campus in a way in Studio C on BYU Sports Nation alongside Dave McCann. I'm Spencer Linton. Let's keep it rolling with the BYU women's volleyball conversation and do so with the reigning West Coast Conference Player of the Year, two-time setter of the year, really an all-timer at this point. Uh, and she's got more work to do. Whitney Bauer of BYU women's volleyball is on BYU Sports Nation. Welcome back to the show, Whitney. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Okay, I'm trying to figure out what year you are because of the whole COVID scramble. I like, know. 
Like, Thank where you. are you in school and where are you in your eligibility? Okay, senior school, and then I have two more years with volleyball. So this year and then next year. You have two more years two of more eligibility, years. Yep. but you're already a senior uh -huh. academically. Yes, yep. Thank you, COVID. I guess there are they, some good things that came yep. from COVID. That's great right? news for your coach. <laughs> That's great news for your coach that you have that you have two years. Everyone thinks you're the best player. Um, the league certainly does, and, uh, and history has shown that, that you're a spectacular setter. What's the key to setting the ball for your teammates? Things Ooh. are going on, and, and you're the quarterback. What are, you, uh -huh. what are you thinking about? Oh, man, all kudos to my passers, though, really, because it all starts at the pass. I mean, my volleyball players know it, but it starts at the pass, and it ends with a hitter, so... I get the easy job. I'm just the middleman. <laughs> the, easy, the easy job? That's one way to look at it. Okay, but to your point, yeah, servers, if you talk to every volleyball coach in the history of the game yep. across America, it's like, what's the key to tonight's match? Serve, Serve receive. receive. Serve yeah. receive will be in that answer yep. somewhere. Um, and, and I almost hate to bring it up, but in the NCAA tournament, it got a little shaky there right, right? in the right. Sweet 16 match. Yes. So what do you do to shore things up like that um, after an emotional loss like that and then an, a long offseason? How, do you, how yeah. do you prepare yourself for Sweet 16 teams mm -hmm. and opponents and the serve receive that goes along with that? Right. I mean, it's a lot of pressure. And I, as a, I'm not a passer, so I don't really know that aspect. But, I mean, after that, that Sweet 16 game, I just kind of forgot about it. But... Now we're back, you know, we're trying to just take the bull by the horns and we're, we're working on our passing and we're focusing on it. And we're, you know, it's something that we're working on and um, it's definitely something in our control. So we're yeah. hoping that it skips better this year. <laughs> what can you tell us about the passing? Because you're receiving yeah. it, like you said. What yeah. can you tell us from your perspective? How has the passing been? Right, well, the cool thing about this team is everyone works so hard. So everyone's just willing to get better and we got some new faces and um, everyone just wants to get better. And so personally, from my eyes, I think it's gotten a lot better. So mm. I think it's, it'll be exciting this year. This is a program that's built for expectation, and the expectation mm -hmm. is that you'll win the league again and, and be a contender mm -hmm. in, the, in the country, and that seems to be just fine with you, right? Yeah. If they weren't expecting, <laughs> if that wasn't what was coming in preseason, be going, hey, you forget about us? Yeah. So when, when you see that, does mm -hmm. it create more pressure, or does it go, hey, that's what we're all about here? Yeah. I, I think there's a little bit of pressure to it, you know, being ranked number one in the West Coast and being on the first team. But, you know, I think pressure is a privilege, and I think, I think in the end I think pressure is a good thing, and I think it will make us better. Um, but, you know, we just got to approach every single practice and every single match, you know, with the growth mindset and just wanting to get better every single time. Um, I think we've been doing a good job of that so far, and, you know, who cares that we're number one, but we're going to go out and, you know, just take every single game like it's the national championship game. So, um, you know, we just have a growth mindset. We just want to get better. All right, uh, yeah, top 10 team, uh, number nine in the national rankings. Uh, mm -hmm. As we just pointed out, you're picked to win the West Coast Conference again. And the West Coast Conference is a good volleyball conference. Yep. Yeah. You face some really nice teams. Um, but your team dynamic and the personnel are obviously different mm -hmm. when you lose the likes of Kenzie Kerber and Taylor Ballard Nixon, among right. others. So how will your team dynamic on the floor be different than what it was last year? Yeah, we, we lost some really, really good players. You know, those are some of the most fun players I've ever played with. But the th I think the cool thing about this team is everyone's just so, so willing to work hard and so willing to adapt. You know, um, during the off season and preseason, that's the time to take you know breaks from volleyball and to go on vacation. But everyone was just on campus and in the weight room, just getting strong and getting physical, and it's really making a difference on the court. Um, you know, first day of practice, everyone's verticals just shot up, and so you know it's just a testament to see you know how hard they're willing to work in the off season, and it's just so cool. When you're at home uh, having Sunday dinner with your family, uh -huh. do, you, do you ever just start talking about, wouldn't it be great to have a, an entire team full of balance? <laughs> I guess that conversation happens occasionally. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. um, no. you're up to three, yeah. right? Yep, yep. What's that like? Playing with your sisters is like the coolest opportunity ever. I wish everyone could experience, you know, playing with their siblings. And it's something I never want to take for granted. And um, it's cool because they, they know that your strengths and they know your weaknesses and they know when to push you and, you know, when to ease off. And so... I guess it gets a little competitive here and there. You know, I stuff blocked Eden a couple of practices ooh. ago. And, yeah, ooh. And um, things got a little tense at home, but she just told me that she was coming for my fingers the next day. So, <laughs> <laughs> but it's all good. It's a healthy relationship, and it's something that I just would never want to take for granted. <laughs> a so. healthy relationship. Yep. Yes. Nothing yep. pushes uh, athletes more than, a, than athletes in the family. Yeah, that's, that's very true. Isn't that interesting how that, how that works out? Yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay, so for those that aren't familiar with the Bauer sisters, we've talked about you and what you do as a spectacular setter. Mm -hmm. um, how would you explain Morgan's game, and then how would you explain Eden's game? 
Oh, that's a good question. Morgan, so they play different positions. Mm -hmm. So Morgan's a libero and Eden's an outside hitter. So I guess that in itself, they're, they're very different. But um, Morgan's scrappy. Morgan's a very, very, very kind person. And so she's like the sweetheart of the team. But she's um, always just willing to give her, give her everything. And Eden's just a little fireball. Like Eden brings so much energy. And so they're both kind of the same and they're both kind of different. They both bring just great things to the team. So Will, will there ever be a time where the three of you are on the floor at the same time, and has that ever happened? Uh, three sisters on the floor <laughs> for any BYU women's sport? I don't know. Like I know we, there's been two. There's, there's been yeah, two. Sure. But, but I don't, yeah, sure. I don't know about level. three. That's, that's, that's a trifecta. Next level. <laughs> that's, that's next level. And we is really there a scenario look. where that, would, that could happen? It could happen. Okay. It could, but we'll see. We'll see. Whitney Bauer is with us on BYU Sports Nation. She's that would be a nightmare for the announcers. <laughs> How would Jeremy handle Bauer to Bauer to Bauer? Then you call them by their first names. Whitney, <laughs> Yeah, Eden. you have yeah. to. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh, okay, I talked uh, a lot about last season, and it was spectacular. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, it felt like you won every match. You didn't, but it felt like you won basically every match. Um, and you go in just like, yeah, undefeated in the West Coast Conference. Mm -hmm. How do you, in your mind, what would be an improvement on last season? Because, I mean, look at the record, another Sweet 16 trip, and it's like, well, that's, yeah. that was really good. Right. So in your mind, what would be an improvement on last season? Ooh, personally, I would say, I mean, my job as a setter, you know, to put up good hitable balls to my to my pins and to my middles and my right sides. And so that's something I'm always just trying to work on, especially in the off season, is just to make sure my, my tempo is consistent and my location's consistent. Um, and also being an offensive weapon, I think that's something that Heather's been helping me with too. Um, that's something that I just want to get better at. And, and in the end, it helps our offense too because it creates space. And so... Um, I think both those things are personally that I think I've gotten better at, and I'd still like to get a lot better at that, but something I've gotten better at over the years. <laughs> so, sure. Yeah. Sure. As the team goes, have you circled that next round of the NCAA tournament? Is that a thing? Like, or are you just like, are you totally in the mode where you're like, you're just in coach speak mode, and it's like one match at a time? Like, yep. Yep. That second option right there. <laughs> all right. Well, let's set the coach uh, speak aside. Let's just put it over here for a minute. <laughs> so you got Pittsburgh next week. You had a few games before yeah. then. Pitt, the lone team that beat you last year back there. Mm -hmm. Your season ends on their floor right. in the NCAA tournament back back there. So you get all that negative vibe from Pitt, and you get them at home. How eager are you, just as a competitor, to get a shot at Pitt? That's so funny because I, yes, all those emotions as you're talking about, it, they're, they're building up right now. They're building up. But, um, yeah, like he said earlier, it's just one game at a time. Like, I'm not even focused on Pitt right now. You know, we just got to take. Focused on Ryder. Yep, but we're just worried about Ryder. And so, um Ryder and Duke, yep. I'll maintain those negative feelings for you. You got it. I will you step in. We'll keep them on this show, and then, and then next week we'll be, okay. able, be in okay. a better spot. But so great to have them at the at the Smithfield. Yeah, house. yeah, it'll be exciting. And, yeah. Duke, and Duke tomorrow night. I don't think Duke's been Great early before. season schedule. Yep. Yeah. We're very much looking forward to it and mm -hmm. showing a lot of that on BYU TV. Whitney, mm -hmm. thanks for putting up with our questions. Thank you. Thanks for hanging out with us. <laughs> You're welcome. You know, Say hi to the whole family. I will. I will. <laughs> <laughs> the, whole, the whole Bauer clan. And uh, let's give you some... BYU Sports Nation karma for your opening weekend. Yeah? You yep. know how it goes. Yep. You come on the show, uh -huh. you get the karma. It's you get the karma, stuff. I guess. <laughs> it, it's real. Okay, it's thanks, Whitney. Stuff. Thanks, Whitney. Good luck Thank tomorrow. You. Thank you. Coming up, how much pressure is on Jaron Hall? We should probably ask how much pressure is on Whitney Bauer. And, uh, Dave, there is one former BYU Batcat absolutely getting it done in the big leagues. We'll discuss next. This is BYU Sports Nation. Trio Orem Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life when you live at Trio. Less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TrioOrem.com. Before I was a coach at BYU, or before I was even a player, I was a BYU fan. That's why BYU football exists, is because of the fans. 
to have a bunch of fans that want to see you be aggressive. I think everybody can live through our 123 guys on the roster and the 11 that are on the field at a time. Really, it all starts and ends with the fans. My name's Wilbur. You know what happens to pigs around here? They're saving him for Christmas. It isn't fair. I want to live. You will. Spider, that thing is creepy. Look at her. I'm making you a promise right now. I am not going to let them kill you. So I need special words and lots of them. Would you make that? It's made. Clever little spider, isn't she? You made me your friend. And in doing so, you made a spider beautiful to everyone. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Nation is on demand. Download the BYU TV and BYU radio apps or download the podcast on your favorite podcast platform. Please subscribe, rate, and review the show. Our question of the day, how much pressure is on BYU quarterback Jaron Hall going into the 2022 BYU football season? At BYU, Jake says on Instagram, oh boy, Get ready. we're going here. He says, Justin Bieber put it best. <laughs> Look, if the Beeb says something, that's like E.F. Hutton. You listen. Justin Bieber said it best, quote, calm down, don't rush, no pressure. I thought Aaron Rodgers said that. From the a Beeb team perspective, BYU Jake continues. <laughs> Jaron shouldn't feel much pressure because you win and lose as a team in terms of individual pressure. I'm sure he doesn't even care about the awards and accolades. He's just going to show up and play football. I think we all kind of feel that way about Jaron, like maturity, leadership, composure, respect, all of those things uh, come to mind when you talk about Jaron Hall. Like he's, the synonyms around him and his personality, for his personality, are all really good. Like he, he's, he feels like a guy that is going to be ready to handle pressure. Our elite voice of the day presented by Sundance Mountain Resort from at BYUSN Groupie. Love that. Mental pressure, none. He has the mental fortitude of a five-star general. Pocket pressure, not with this offensive line. Physical pressure, about 825,000 PSI, the required amount to make a diamond, Dave. Yeah. Do you know how hard it is to polish a diamond? <laughs> just go like this. Just go like that. He's already, right he's already felt a lot of the 825,000 PSI, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. let's polish that diamond up. And it's not a diamond in the rough either. It is a, it is a diamond in a team that is stacked and yes. ready to play and healthy. In a full-scale jewelry case. Yeah, it's like right? a jewelry store. Yes, he's a diamond in the jewelry store. <laughs> Today's Rise and Shout Out presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Dave, I know this one hits close to home and your heart. It's My a Chicago Cub. Michael Rucker, he's the only BYU baseball player on a 40-man roster. And he pitches almost every other day for the Cubs out of the bullpen. Three and one on the season. Has been phenomenal since the All-Star break. Wrote about him in the Deseret News. So I got to know him a little bit and his wife. And, and tremendous story. Great representatives of BYU. And they're killing it with the Cubs. Yes, they are. Nice job. Future looks good for Mike Rucker in the major leagues. Our thanks to today's guest, the CEO of Bilt Bar, Nick Greer. And one of the All-American volleyball players for BYU, Whitney Bauer. Conversation continues 24-7 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Use the hashtag BYUSN. For Dave, I'm Spencer. Shout out to Heather Olmstead. See you tomorrow. BYU Sports Nation. Go Cougs.